I'm probably going to end up regretting this video. In this video, I want to show you how I structure my Shopify stores and I'm actually going to take you through one of my old stores that I no longer have time to run. Not sure if I'll regret it, but let's hop right into my computer. Throughout this video, we're going to be touching on a few key points that are essential to having a good website. The first one is photography. In my opinion, this is the most important because the internet has become so visual and in a customer's mindset, low quality photography means a low quality company. Not to mention your customers are also probably going to be coming from Instagram, which is a super visual platform. If you can't find any good product pictures, then I recommend you order it and take some yourself. If you don't want to wait the two weeks from China, then you can order it from Amazon, most likely. So let's look at my store and see how this applies. This may be a bit embarrassing because I haven't looked at this store in months, but it made me a bit of money and probably still could, so feel free to copy it. So here's my store. It was a bikini store for um, the summer season, really. And I would probably change this. I don't really like it. It's kind of low quality. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I really focused on high quality photography. Those are good pictures. And then I have my Instagram down here also with some high quality pictures. This is also a pretty clean logo, which is part of having good photography. The next point is going to be your descriptions. Those are huge and I see way too many people just leaving the default overload descriptions and that really just looks awful. So let's see what I'm doing here. This is good because it's really a sales pitch designed to inform the customer about the product. So as you can see here, it's on sale and I have a little mention of the sale right here, which also says, limited stock remaining. That's going to be part of the scarcity factor. Right here, I fed social proof into the description, which I highly recommend doing if you can. I inform customers what the bikini was made of. And as you can see here, I have a safe checkout button, which I highly recommend. I've tested it with and without, and it truly improves your conversions. The next is going to be your information pages. These are huge because your customer truly needs to know about your business before they buy or they're not going to. As you can see here, I have a privacy policy, which I highly recommend just to protect yourself. I have a frequently asked questions that contains my shipping info. I have a contact us, that's a need. And I also have a contact us right here. And I have a track your order, which I would recommend, but it's, it's not a necessity. You also need size charts if you're selling clothing. I don't have an about us page, which is something that I would definitely change if I was going to start this business back up. The next factor is going to be scarcity. This is huge and there's a ton of apps that you can use to help you with this. As you can see here, I have the stock countdown, which I've recently been having trouble with. I use the Beaconing app and Shopify is actually making them show the real stock number that you have. You can set it for a certain number, which I've done here, but it will reflect on all the products. So if you have 15 items in stock for this, you'll have 15 items in stock for all the other products where you're using the stock countdown. You can also get a countdown timer app, which tells customers when the sale is going to end. I've seen some businesses use this effectively, but I've never really found an increase in my conversions. It does look a little spammy in my opinion. If you do opt to use the countdown timer, then I would highly recommend setting the time for something random and something in the minutes. So like 27 minutes or 34, it's a lot better than the default two days or whatever. As I mentioned before, there's also scarcity in the product description and that correlates with this. The next factor is going to be your products and I'm not talking about specific products. I'm just talking about simply the products that you have on your store. You're going to need at least 10 products and you're going to need some that are more expensive and less expensive than the offer that you're promoting. In addition, I would recommend getting an app called personalized recommendations. I don't have it on this store, but it's going to have a list of products that come up here. And basically all the customer has to do is scroll down and click add to cart. 
It's really useful, it doesn't increase your loading time, and it's easy money. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to say that your store probably is not going to make or break you, but it definitely is a large factor in your success. And these five elements are a large factor in the quality of your store. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh